Okay, so a quick one. Um, basically, I saw uh, somebody was doing um, salt annealing on 3D prints, and that's where you take a 100% infill uh, PLA 3D print. They were doing it with also with PETG, um, and they were sort of um, packing it in um, blended salt, and so uh, the sort of powdered salt, um, and by and then baking it in the oven at about 200 degrees for about an hour. Um, that was mostly just to let it sort of soak in. Um, and that leaves you with a print that's completely remelted internally, um, which is great for the mechanical properties, because one of the big problems with 3D prints is the layer adhesion is a lot weaker than uh, if you lay things flat. Uh, now, I don't think this is particularly relevant for climbing holds, although it's nice to have a much stronger print. Um, but the texture that they were getting on the prints immediately reminded me of a climbing hold. Um, and so I thought I'd give it a shot. And actually what it's resulted in is a really strong technique, I think, for making 3D printed climbing holds. Now, these aren't particularly the cheapest way of having climbing holds, or the easiest, um, but, you know, it's quite hard to get good holds. Um, I've talked about this before in terms of big slopers. Um, it crimps are much easier. But um, in terms of having like quite interesting holds, um, you know, that's quite unusual. Or just, you know, if you want to have a go at making things, and that's kind of where I am, uh, is, you know, I could easily buy holds and, and wait for the delivery or whatever, but this is quite an interesting project. And I think particularly, um, you know, there's some holds at my, my climbing gym that I regularly frequent that is, uh, that are really nice. Um, they're quite sort of challenging, um, and I found them. I know what they are. They're some flat holds holds, mostly. Um, but they're pretty expensive. They're sort of £30 for a set, which, you know, is a, is a goodish deal for, for climbing holds. But um, I don't particularly want to spend that um, just for a couple of feet holds. You know, that kind of gets a bit much. Uh, and also, um, you know, I've talked previously about it's quite hard to tell um, what a hold's going to be like from the pictures. And so if you're looking for some really challenging feet, etc., uh, it can be a bit better just to make them. Um, so that's what I've done. I made a load of foot chips, I made a load of crimps. Uh, obviously this isn't great for big holds, um, but I think it's going to be great for little crimps, um, and it will really round out my hold selection, and particularly making little crimps that aren't pinches, i found quite challenging to get hold of. Um, and so I'm going to run through the um, salt packing process next, and um, we're going to have a little look at the results. Okay, so I'm just going to show um, putting uh, this crimp and this little tiny foot in the sand, uh, in the salt, sorry. Um, and uh, so um, I'm going to put it quite deep in because um, what we found is that you know you need the top pressure. Um, so let's just get almost all of it out of the way. Nice thin layer at the bottom there. Then just I'm giving a sprinkle to make sure that the um, the holes are filled nicely. Um, so that just helps make sure. Um, previously, I have done um, a little dip in water and then. Uh, use some coarser grain salt just on the surfaces I want extra grip on, but I don't think that's necessary for this guy. Um, I think he wants to be quite smooth, he's very positive, so um, I'll just nestle that in there, make sure it's not touching the bottom, make sure it's nice and supported around the edge, and then do the same with this one, just smush it in, and then get it in. You can see the salt tends to want to move a bit, so you've got to just be careful that it doesn't move and disrupt the moulds too much. Um, so I've just blitzed this salt again after um, a couple of goes, because it tends to clump together after a while. Um, Okay, so I've just um, got some holds out of the sand, so we'll see how those are. They've come out quite nicely. I, uh, I like the texture. Um, obviously these are going to be a bit rougher on the skin because they've got sand, and I think you know, it's going to wear off over the next, 
next few uses, um, but a really nice moulding. They've got a bit of a sag in them, um, so I think the salt's slightly less structural, but uh, I'll give them a sand, and then these are going to be absolutely wicked tiny edges. Okay, so here you can see the, um, the texture on the holds is uh, really nice, actually. It's really nice and grippy, um, and the, the shape's been preserved really nicely. Um, and I think for some of the holds I'm going to paint or so sand this slightly and then paint it over with some uh, black black paint mixed with varnish to give it this dual text thing because the holds I'm trying to uh, copy have, have this area in texture and then this area is smooth. Um, I think that's really cool. Um, and as you can see it works for bigger holds as well so this is actually um, you know almost matchable. Uh, it's sort of designing to be um, quite a marginal pocket, matchable pocket. Um, so I think these are really good, uh, and I've even made some really, really, really tiny feet um, that, again, are uh, you know inspired by some holds at my local gym um, that are basically just one screw hole. Now the issue that I'm having with these prints is uh, this: I'm getting voids in the back of the print, um, and as you can see, sometimes this is quite severe. Um, and sometimes it's not really an issue at all. Um, now I'm not particularly worried about this from a strength point of view, you know, a lot of these things, even where actually the wall thickness ends up being quite thin, I think these holds are gonna survive perfectly fine, you know, I'm really not concerned about their strength. Um, these are really, you know, beefy, beefy pieces of plastic, to be honest. Um, and commercial holds have exactly the same issue quite often, uh, in terms of voids behind them, but that is actually, you know, is a problem and I think it's something we can address and I think this comes from basically mould swell uh, with the salt, so you pack everything in salt um, and then if it's not packed really tightly and if it's not sort of weighed down from the top, um, you know, the salt lifts open very slightly, um, you know, when the plastic melts and I think it's partly from maybe having the they put things in the past uh, the, in the oven for too long, you know, for, for minutes uh, minutes too long, so it sort of really flows. Um, but you get this mould swell, and then the plastic runs to the bottom. And so what I've been doing is putting them purposefully face down, so I get these voids on the back of the holder. It doesn't really matter. Um, but you know, it's not ideal. We don't really want voids, um, and so. One of the things I'm going to try doing is various ways of packing the salt better. Um, I think more salt is going to be good. I think putting like a, a bowl on top of the salt just to press on it. Because um, I, I almost think that like no amount of force is too much. Now part of the problem is of course is that salt is really really, um, or hot salt is really corrosive. Uh, and particularly when it's powdered. Um, so you have to be quite careful, you know, I, I would use something like uh, one of these blocks that I have. If it was sand, for instance, that would be fine. Um, but it's not, um, and I can't really use those, because um, it will cause a problem. Now, once they come out of the salt, um, they're obviously encrusted with salt, you know, it really sticks in the texture and it's quite hard to clean off. Um, I've been using a heated ultrasonic bath, so about 40 degrees, 10 minutes in the ultrasonic, and they clean up really nicely. Um, if you didn't have an ultrasonic, then I think just hot water and a kind of toothbrushy type brush would be fantastic, um, or just agitated hot water for a while. Um, one thing that I've heard about is, you know, um, PLA and brittles when it gets wet, um, and so you have to be a bit careful about that, um, and so maybe not soaking them like overnight or something. Um, but on the plus side, from what I understand, is the annealing process makes them much more temperature resistant, um, up to about 100 degrees once it's been annealed. Now, you know, I don't want to take these holds up to because I think it will damage the texture. Um, but that means you don't really have to be worried about 50 degree water, 60 degree water, which you would um, before they're annealed. Um, so I guess the question is, uh, who should use this um, and whether I think it's good. I think it's good. Uh, I think it's really good for crimps and technical feet. I don't think I'd use it for anything bigger than that. It's really not worth printing it. I think you could print like with the back sort of hollow if you really wanted. Um, I don't feel I've got the hang of this whole salt packing thing. I'm going to keep working on it. I think more salt would definitely help. Um, I did previously try damping it slightly and that worked really well. 
um, but it was basically impossible to get out of the container um, because it uh, froze up into sort of solid block of salt. Um, so I think that's something to play with, um, but maybe not something to do. Who should actually do this? Because I don't think it's really necessarily good for everyone. Um, obviously, I have said I don't think it's actually cheaper than just buying holds. Um, but for some interesting shaped holds, it's a good way of doing it. If you have lots of time, which certainly I do at the moment, um, it's quite good fun to kind of have a play with. Uh, if you really like the idea of making your own climbing holds, then that's uh, it's a really good one. Um, I think it'd also be really interesting uh, if one wanted to sort of manufacture new holds. Um, it'd be a really interesting way of sort of prototyping new shapes without having to make moulds, but still have usable climbing holds. Um, and I think actually if you want to, you know, make a few holds, um, it is actually, in terms of raw materials, very cheap. Um, this is quite a good way of doing making instead of you know if you made a mold you'd have to make uh, you know maybe ten or twenty of uh, you know cast holds to be worth making a mold for um, but this you can do one offs or two offs and that lets you iterate quite quickly and so you know I've got some shapes that I like and I don't like are a bit small I can make them bigger you know it's just one print away and actually I think probably we're talking about um, fifteen to twenty minutes active work per hold to print so I'll put the files that I've got. You know online so that uh, you can print it if you want um but, you know when you're starting to talk about that time you're competitive then with wooden holds you're definitely less work than the concrete holds um so i think it's a really good technique um but you know only if you've really got a printer um i think it's great if you've got 3d design experience then that's very good but if you don't then obviously it's gonna be quite hard to design holds i mean you know you go ahead and try um, but I found it's taken quite a long time to get really comfortable with 3D design software. Um, but I, as I say, I'll put some files up so people can have a go at printing them. Um, yeah, so give it a shot. Um, I really want to hear if anybody has, number one, nailed the salt um, annealing process, because that is really tricky. But also if you have any ideas about how they could uh, be improved. Um, you know, I'm trying this dual text thing with the varnish. I think that might work quite well. I tried with sand, that worked fairly well, and actually maybe something to go with, but it, it moves a little bit more, I think, than the salt. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, so, um, thanks.